Welcome back to another episode of Two Dudes in a Cage, featuring myself, Charles Clark, and my co-host, Matthew Johnson. We are here to bring you another uh, Night of Fights, UFC Fight Night, Blahovich versus Rakic. Uh, man, before we get into the fights, man, last week was crazy. UFC 274 was great. Uh, man, we had a night of great fights. Uh, I think the only fight everybody's talking about was that Rose fight. We went 5-14 on our picks, so we did pretty well. Uh, man, I think everybody's talked out how disappointing the co-main event was, so I don't think we're going to do that. Hey, I, I apologize if I sound a little funny. I got my nose busted in sparring last night. Devon, I appreciate it. So if I sniff too much or if I sound kind of funny, I apologize for that. Um, and with that, we will uh, get into the fights. First off, we have... Nick Maximoff, who's 8-0, versus Andre Petrovsky, who's 7-2. Man, Andre, he's a good wrestler. He comes from the Ultimate Fighter. Um, I think he was kind of one of their more favored guys on that season. Um, he was picked, picked pretty quickly, and, and a lot of people expected him to win. He eventually got uh, beaten by Brian Battle. Um, I think this guy uh, uses his strength a lot. He does seem to be hittable at range to me. Um, he, he, he has gotten tired in the past. He keeps his hands low. Um, Nick Maximov, man, he keeps a good pace with his grappling. He just doesn't do a lot of sub attempts. Um, I think this fight is primarily going to be a grappling match. That's what both of these guys favors as they're not really great strikers. Um, I think Nick, Nick Maximoff does really good at looking for the position. Um, he, he tends to play it safe, though, and not go for a lot of subs. He was an All-American wrestler. What All-American means is that um, he plays top eight in nationals. So that's pretty good. Um, man, Andre, man, he, he only lands about half of his takedowns. He's kind of a scrapper on his feet. He he tries to pull guillotine a lot. He, he's I've seen him do it a lot, multiple times in every fight. I don't think he's landed one yet. Um, I think he's going to come out hard. He's probably going to win the first round. Uh, he's got really good takedown defense. So I, so I think he's going to keep him up uh, in that first round. But I think after that, he's going to fade and Maximoff is going to take over and get the win. What do you think, Matt? Sorry, dog was barking. Gotcha. I think it's going to be a grappling match. Uh, Maximov's going to grind it out. He's going to get that decision win. But uh, Petrovsky, he has a 65% striking accuracy. So Maximov is going to get hit. Middleweights, they they got power. You know, he can go in for a takedown, get rocked. But I think even if he's going to get you know his clock rattled. He's still going to pull it out. Maximov is going to grapple. He's going to grind. And he's averages six takedowns a fight. So I, I'm saying Maximov for the victory. Yeah, I think so, too. I, I think he should take this one. Uh, yeah, there might be a little bit of a worry uh, in that first round because Andre comes out hard. Um, he might stuff takedowns at first. But I think I think he's going to – Maximov is going to grind it out with this wrestling for sure. Cool, cool. Good pick. Uh, uh, we're starting off uh, picking the same way, so that's good. Another, another quick shout out to Says MMA, the number one gym in Colorado Springs. Man, we got a lot of big things happening, a lot of great fights up and coming. Uh, also, something to look out for, uh, Matt and the Two Dudes in the Cage podcast. We're going to start a sub-series called Fighter Spotlight, Fighter Profile. Uh, we got We got a few pro fighters. Uh, up and coming from our gym well we're going to do them first and if you're a pro fighter or you're going to be turning pro you're interested in doing a fighter spotlight yourself let us know we'd love to have you on our show right uh and next if you up, have questions that you want us to ask you know pop them in the comments yes yes we'd love to hear any feedback you have absolutely that's that's what makes the show better Next up, we have uh, Tatsura Tyra, who's 10-0, versus Carlos Candelario, who's 8-1. Uh, 
This fight was supposed to happen a couple weeks ago. Matt, what are your thoughts on this? I'm going tough to row. He is a young prospect, 22. He's 10-0. He's, you know, still green, but he's in the UFC at 22 for a reason. He's very well-rounded. I'm assuming he's probably been doing this all his life because his striking is crisp. His grappling, when you're a striker first, your grappling always suffers a little bit. So he does have some work to do in that aspect. Yeah. But I just I don't think Carlos is going to be able to get him down and hold him down. I think it's going to be a striking match. They're flyweight, so it's going to be fast paced and full of action. But Tatsuro is going to get the victory. Yeah, yeah. I, I love those flyweight fights. They're always full of action, like you said. I agree with you on the pick. Uh, Tatsuro should get this win. L- little bit of discrepancy in how I think the fight's going to go down. I think Tatsuro is a uh, he's a good grappler. Uh, he's super strong, like you said. He's young, but he's got lots of good experience. Uh, kind, kind of Lario, he he scrambles well, but at sometimes he kind of messes up in the scramble. He's more of a volume puncher. He likes to pressure you. Um, I think Tatsuro has good late good leg kicks but he's kind of a slow striker um, and he keeps his head up a little bit. Uh, he, he has great cardio, but I do think that, that like, like you said, his striking is still coming around and, and he could get exposed a little bit uh, in my mind on the feet. And, and that reason I, I think Tom Searle might be looking for more of a takedown uh, than for the whole fight to play out on the feet. Um, I agree. Both these guys are great prospects. Um, uh, the, the, the difference I see though, is, uh, Tatsuro Tyra, he's finishing his fights. He's, uh, whether by sub, uh, or by knockout, most of his fights have come by uh, a finish as whereas Carlos, most of his fights are a decision. And that kind of, uh, is what's leading me to pick Tatsuro, uh, more for the win myself there. Yeah. Cool, cool, cool. All right. Next up, we have Verna Janjanova versus Angela Hill. Oh, man. Verna, man, she's she's got some some good subs on her win. She's finishing on a lot of people. Um, she has good power in her hands, too. Uh, she, she gets neglected for her striking a lot, but her striking is really coming around, and she can hit you hard as well. Man, Angela Hill... She doesn't have the greatest record. Um, she's 13 and 11. She's had a ton of close fights, a lot of split decisions. I think this, that that a lot of those fights could have gone either way. Um, and she, some of those split decision losses, she could have won. So her record's really not, not uh, what you should look at when you look at her fighting. She's a really big volume puncher. Um, I, I think she's going to be hungry for a win, man. I, I really do. Um, Verna is going to look for that ground control. She was an Invicta champ, so she's a former champion. But I think uh, Angela Hill can pick her apart, especially at range on the feet. Um, I think this is kind of a classic striker versus gla- grappler fight. And um, whoever gets the fight where they want it is going to win the fight. I think if... Um, the grappling gets neutralized and it turns into a stand-up fight. Angela Hill is going to win this fight. And I think if Verna can get the fight to the ground, she most likely will be able to sub Angela Hill. Um, a- Angela Hill has got some good training partners. Um, I-, I think she has good enough wrestling and takedown defense and jujitsu to uh, – keep the fight standing she does uh she is able to get up pretty quickly so i I think if she does go down she's going to try to get up quick and not play around on the ground and and i i think i'm going to take angela hill on this one Uh, i'm just feeling her for some reason on this one what do you think here's an interesting fact 62 percent of angela hill fights go to decision so 82 percent of verna's end up and finish 76 percent of the time it's by submission i think verna is going to try to go to the ground 
She has faith in her hands. She knows she can use the power when she needs to. Angela Hill, to me, is more of a striker. Great ground game, but kickbox first. I think if Angela Hill can keep her range, she's going to win by decision. Yeah. If Verna gets in, gets into the clinch, drags her down, it's going to be a short night, and I'm picking Verna. Oh. I, I think she hits hard enough. I think she's going to get it done. Nice, nice. Yeah, man, I, I it's it's kind of hard to decide. I, I, I do kind of want to lean towards Verna because she'll get a takedown and stuff. I just think uh, I just think Angela Hill is gonna be super hungry in this one for some reason. I, I I don't know why. I just think she's gonna be fired up. She's gonna be ready to go. Um, uh, you know, Verna, she does have really good grappling, but she lost to Mackenzie Dern. You know, she subbed Felisa uh, Herring. Uh, um, you know, you know, she doesn't have great grappling wins over great grapplers. And I think Angela Hill's grappling is getting better. But, oh, man, this one could definitely go either way. Yeah. And if I, she, get, she gets the takedown, she's, she's most likely going to win. I think it lives in the clinch. Because I think Angela Hill, you know, sometimes she gets too confident in the clinch, and it backfires. And I think this is going to be one of those times. First round, she's going to keep her distance. She's going to get, you know, a little more confident. And I think she's going to make a mistake and get into a clinch war, and that's where it's going to go downhill. Right. Yeah, yeah, I can see it happening. So it's oh. – man, this, this next one, Michael Johnson, 20 and 17. Man, that the, the record is all over the place. A lot of people have him listed as 19 and 17. His tapology record is 19 and 17. But I counted up the wins. There's like 23 or 24 wins on there. So that's kind of confusing to me. Versus Alan Patrick, who's 15 and 3 with one no contest. Man, what do you think about this? So the UFC has him as 20 and 17. Yep, yep. He's lost four in a row. And Patrick's lost two in a row with the no contest i that fight you could say he was winning he was out pointing but we're gonna we're not gonna count that one so we'll say a two fight loss and a four fight loss so really is it winner stays loser goes i don't know what i do know is michael johnson is not gonna lose five in a row right. he has wrestling granted against habib it showed the opposite but he is a wrestler first who, like many wrestlers, fell in love with their hands. But Johnson's got power. He's the younger fighter at 35, which blew my mind that Alan Patrick was 38. I did not realize he was that old. He's starting to get up there. Yeah. He's at the yeah. time yep. I, I just I think it's going to be a grinding decision, and I think Johnson gets it done. But it's going to be a close one. And it's going to go back and forth, and it could be either way. But Johnson gets it done. Nice. nice. Yeah. Man, I'm, I'm, I'm actually having a hard time picking this one. So since you're leaning with Johnson, I'm going to lean with Johnson, too, uh, since I really just can't make my mind up. Man, Alan Patrick, man, the dude doesn't fight a lot. Most of the time, he, he fights once a year, sometimes twice a year. Uh, he takes a year off fights a year again uh it's it's really he just really hasn't fought a whole lot uh to me yeah he's not super active michael johnson like you said man he's got that power plus he's got that speed too uh he is starting to slow down a little bit he, he's on a little bit of decline a lot of people think he's peaked already but man this dude has faced some some really good competition uh, he's faced Khabib. He's got wins over T Tony Ferguson in his prime. He beat Edson Barboza. He beat Dustin Poirier. Uh, I mean, uh, he, he's got some good wins over some good dudes. Um, uh, the thing that worries me about him is his takedown defense. Um, you know, Alan Patrick, his train, he's been training at shoot, shoot box with Oliveira. Um, the only the issue I see with Alan Patrick is his cardio. Like dudes like tends to be super wild and has lots of pressure and he always tires himself out because of his fighting style. 
And uh, um, I, I think Michael Johnson is the better striker in this one. And, and um, I, I think, uh, yeah, like you said, he's probably not going to lose five in a row. I, I think he's going to dig deep, man. He, 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 he tends to he just pull something out of nowhere and gets these wins. But then on the other hand, he also uh, has given up on a few fights too as well. So, so that is a little bit of worry. Um, I think he needs to keep this fight standing. And I think Alan Patrick needs to utilize his wrestling and look for a submission. Um, and so it could be one of those things where if, uh, if it gets to the ground, Alan Patrick may, may get a win, may get a sub finish. And uh, um, Michael Johnson can win the fight if it stays standing. Uh, but, but yeah, I think, I think I'm going to go with Michael Johnson too, uh, just because uh, he's going to dig deep look for that win. He doesn't want five in a row. He wants to keep his job in the UFC and uh, the inactivity of Alan Patrick too uh, could play a part in it. And, you know, typically you lose three and you're out. Right. So given him, but he has, you know, he is a veteran, has wins over, you know, top five, top 10 guys. Right, right. When they were in their prime. So... He's staying in there, but if he loses another one, what are you going to do? You know, keep right. him to fight Donald Cerrone one more time again, or, you know, it's going to be a good one. And I think there's a lot on the line on this fight. Yeah, right, right. And some fighters now are even getting released after two fights. Uh, Brandon Jenkins had two fights in the UFC. He just got released. Uh, he's not an established vet like Michael Johnson, though. So, man, and things are changing up. You know, he can, he can be out of the UFC after two fights now, it seems like. So, uh, times are getting crazy. Right. I like this next one. Yes, yes. Yeah. Vivian Arugo, who's 10 and 3, versus Andrea Lee, who's 13 and 5. Since you like it, you want to take it off? K G B. She's gonna win. Kickboxing. Uh she's a very crisp striker. And when she first joined, I was like, oh, she's gonna be, you know, in the running for the title. Right. Had a few hiccups. But she gets better every time. She, you know, she's not young. She's not terribly old. Still coming into her prime. She had a lot going on when she was on that losing streak in her personal life. Now that, you know, she's slowly getting out of that. And you can see Vivian, she's going to try to get to the ground. But I think KGB is going to use her defense. You know, she's going to stay on the feet long enough and she's going to get the victory. Uh, I'm calling a stoppage in this one. Okay. Late right. late fight. Probably third round, but stoppage. Nice, nice. Yeah, um, I agree with you. I like Andrea Lee as well. Um, I, I think she should win this one. Andrea Lee is the former LFA flyweight champion. Uh, I, I, I just think uh, Andrea Lee is so well rounded. Um, I, I think she has a, a really good fight IQ where she looks for her fighters' uh, weaknesses. Um, she doesn't have a whole lot of power, but she uses her jab and her volume and her movement really, really well. Um, I think this will turn into a kickboxing fight. Uh, yeah, I think Vivian will try to get it, go for a takedown and work on the ground. Um, it's, it's just not going to work out. Um, I think Andrea Lee is good at distance. Um, she tends to get hit a lot at, at closer range, though. Um, I think I think some of the keys to this fight could be, um, you know, body and leg kicks uh, to slow the opponent down. And um, that could make a real difference in this fight. Uh, I, I do think Andrea is going to win this fight as well. Yes, yes. Right. Next up, we have Jake Hadley, 8 and 0, versus Ellen Namasito, versus 18 and 6. Man, Jake, Jake Hadley, uh, he came, comes from the Contender Series. He missed weight in this fight. Uh, there's a lot of controversy with how he was like treating some of the staff behind the scenes 
they initially uh, didn't want to sign him for that reason because he missed Wade and he was really rude to some of the people. Um, Dana White went ahead and had signed him anyway. Um, he was the the EFC, which is like an African League, and the Cage Warriors champion. Um, the guys fought in Bellator. Um, so, so he's fought in a lot of bigger promotions. Um, Alan Amistito, man, I, I was looking at his record. This dude has 13 canceled fights on his record. Like, dude, that is a, most people have a canceled fight on their record, but 13 canceled fights. That's, that's just like crazy to me how many canceled fights he has. Uh, and he's also fought for a ton of different promotions as well. I think both of these guys are really great grapplers. Uh, Jake Hadley is a super good wrestler. He's got great subs. His striking isn't that great. That's the same as Alan Namasito's. Uh, Jake Hadley, he's killer at taking your back and subbing you out. Um, man, Al Alan Namasito, he's kind of a bigger guy for 125. Um, I think he may cut too much weight, and I think that – uh, that could be an issue for him. You know, it could tire him out. It could could affect his cardio. I think Allen is going to be the better striker in this fight. Um, uh, I think Jake Hadley is going to be smart, though. He's going to wait for his takedown. He's going to set it up, and he's going to look for a submission, and I, and I think he's going to win that way. Um, Allen Amasito, his, uh, his nickname is Puro Oso, and – that translated to skin and bone. I just think that's really interesting. It's kind of a kind of a weird nickname, if you ask me. I'm trying to trying to figure out what exactly that means. Uh, it means he's five eight and he cuts too much weight. <laughs> <laughs> there you go. There you go. Um, I think Allen is a little bit better than a lot of people think. Um, I, I think he could win uh, this fight because he's bigger. It kind of reminds me of the, the, the Andre Feely fight a few weeks ago where Joanne, or Joanne Breederson, everybody was kind of counting him out, but this dude is bigger in size, and he came and put a beat down on him. Um, so for some reason, I kind of feel like like uh, Allen could get a quick win just like Joe Anderson did, but if he doesn't, uh, Jake Hadley most likely will get the win. What do you think? I think that between the two of them, they have 17 submissions. Obviously, Allen has more because he has more fights. But they're to me, they're both grapplers. Yeah. When I when I was researching, that's what I found, that they both like to grapple. I think with Hadley, he's, obviously he has a chip on his shoulder. You're not a douchebag for no reason. Right, right. Um. I mean, some people are, but like I me. think <laughs> I think he's arrogant. Yes, and I I think obviously until he loses, he's not gonna you know feel that humble. It's not gonna change. He's not gonna get humbled yeah. exactly. But this fight, that's not gonna happen. No, he he's gonna have a zero for at least one more. I I think it's gonna end up into a grappling match, and it's gonna be a game of chess on the mat. And I just, I don't think it'll be a finish, but I just, I don't think uh, good old skin and bones is gonna be able to get the finish either. So I think yeah. decision. Skin and bones, such a weird name. So funny, so funny. It's because he's five eight and he cuts down to one twenty five. That's crazy. Like yeah, he's probably Sean O'Malley's five ten. Imagine him cutting ten more pounds. No, he couldn't do it. No. No. Conor McGregor, you know, when he was fighting 145. He looked horrible, too. Oh, yeah. Man. He looked deathly in some way. And, man. <laughs> Gelator. Like, yeah, like a totally different person almost, too. Like, it's scary, like, what these guys do to their bodies to cut that weight, man. It really is. And unfortunately, they only get 12 grand. We don't make enough in this podcast game to talk about pay the fighters more. So right, right. Hey. <laughs> Not yet. Not yet. Maybe someday. Maybe someday. All right. 
Next up, we have Frank Camacho, who's 22 and nine, versus Manuel Torres, who's 12 and two. What do you think? I think Camacho, he's one of those guys that wins a few, loses a few. He's a gatekeeper. Torres is an upcoming prospect. They're giving him Camacho, who's not quite you know top 15 to see if they're ready for contention but to see if they're ready to take that step towards con, you know contention i think camacho is here as a gatekeeper and the ufc is testing torres are you ready to step up the competition or are you not i think torres is ready i think he gets the win i i don't think it's going to take him 15 minutes I think he's going to put on a clinic, and I'm calling another stoppage. Probably wrong, but I'm calling it. Nice, nice. Yeah, I like Manuel Torres, too. Um, man, uh, 13 out of 14 of Manuel Torres' fights have finished in the first round. That's including his wins and losses. He is 12-2, and two, uh, so one of those fights that he lost, he lost in the first round, too. <laughs> Um, man, this guy started super fast. I think Torres is going to have a size advantage. Uh, I think Frank Camacho, he's he's a really good grappler. He's gonna he's a better grappler, but he never uses it. He always he always strikes. Uh, the dude needs to use his wrestling more, but he just he never does for some reason. Uh, it, you know, and I think he's, he's one of those fighters. Wrestlers fall in love with the hands. love with the hands. DC has for said sure. it. Yeah, absolutely. I think Frank's one of those guys for sure. Yeah, I, I just think Manuel Torres. He just has too much power on his feet. He's got great kicks and punches. Um, you know, Frank Camacho. There's a little bit of a chin worry for me. Uh, you know, I think there might be a finish here as well. Plus, he's been out two years. Uh, he got KO'd in this last fight. I just, I just don't think Camacho is super durable. You know, he has taken two years off, so that is a lot of time for his chin to recover. So, um, you know, his chin could have recovered and, and be good. Uh, it does happen. So, so you, you never know. Uh, Manuel oh, Torres. Rest. Yeah, yeah, he could have is, ring is it real at two years for sure. Uh, plus, plus Torres is coming on his debut. So, you know, there could be a little bit of worry there. Um, it's at the apex, so it's not not going to be that that big of a scene, the big crowd, things like that. He did fight on Contender Series, so it could be very similar to that. So so maybe maybe not. It could feel very similar uh, to the Contender Series fight, just with a, a little bigger production, a little bit more people there. Uh, Frank Camacho is 2-5 and five in the UFC. Um, I, I think really, uh, I want to see what Camacho looks like at weigh-ins as well. Um, you know, he's tend to look bad sometimes at weigh-ins and, uh, um, if, if he looks bad at weigh-in, uh, yeah, I'm going to call it dude, dude, Manuel Torres is going to finish him. He's going to dust him. Um, I, I think Torres should get the win for sure. I agree. Nice. Kind of looks like BJ Penn a little bit. Like old school BJ. He does a little for sure. Yeah. You see that? Yeah. It's funny. Rocket. I keep looking over here because I got the fight pulled up. See some of their interesting stats on the UFC. Hey, that's good. That's good. Hit us with some of the facts. Oh, this next one's a good fact. Yes. Oh, oh. The next fight, Caitlin Chuk again. 17 and four versus Amanda Hebas, 11 and two. Man, I think Caitlin is, uh, she's a top contender. Uh, I, I think if she wins this fight, she could get another title rematch, even though she'll probably lose that one again. Um, I, she's on like a four fight winning streak, something like that. There's a definite possibility she could get a rematch if she wins this fight to me. Um, I, th I think she moves really well. She's got good striking. She's got good cardio. She's got good volume. Uh, um, I, I think she's she's uh, she's really a threat to look out for on the feet. Amanda Hebas, she does move well herself. She has good kicks. 
Uh, I think that she's going to be looking for a takedown. She's going to be looking to grapple and looking for a sub. I think Caitlin's going to be the bigger fighter. Um, I think she's fought up in weight before. I think she has a, a really good fight IQ herself. Um, I, I think people tend to underrate her for some reason as well. But I think she's going to have reach on her, uh, reach on Amanda. Um, Caitlin, she, she key offs a lot. A key op is a yell, uh, a yell to give you a big power punch. Um, even when she misses, even when she's like six inches away, she's still key up in uh, with most of her punches. It's kind of a good look, you know, it kind of plays well on the judges, even if she's not landing, she's, she's screaming at her opponent and, um, uh, you know, that aggressiveness uh, can, can come, can, can win you the fight. It's one of the factors, you know, um, so if the fight's more evenly watched and she's yelling through the whole fight. Um, they're going to look at her as more, the more aggressive opponent. I think uh, it's, it's I think, a fact. If you yeah. grunt, you get more power. Right. The Williams sisters have said it. Yes. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. I, I mean, uh, back in my Taekwondo days, uh, we learned to key up and, and you do, it, it gets, you get a lot of added power. Um, um, it, it has to do with breathing out uh, and being more relaxed and uh, less tense of your muscles. Uh, uh, multiple things play into it when you when you yell and use your sternum and, and um, relax the muscles and, and, and all those things uh, into, into your punches and your kicks and all of your movement. But I think Caitlin um, needs to keep her distance, work at her distance. Um, if they do get close, do get against the cage, she needs to clinch and break away. You see her do that a lot. She'll clinch you up, then she'll kind of push off you, try to get back to her distance. Um, Amanda Hibas, uh, she tends to fade a little bit. I think her gas tank is a little bit of a worry, and she does have a little bit of a chin issue. Um, if, if someone could knock her out uh, or get a finish, it could be Caitlin. So, so there is a definite possibility for me there uh, that she could, she might even be able to finish Amanda. Um, I, I think I'm going to pick Caitlin in this one. What about you, Matt? Well, I'm going to say there will be no finish. 82% and 85% respectively for uh, fights that go to decision. Yes. Now, here's another interesting fact. Amanda Rivas is usually a straw weight. She, right. she went up to flyweight, fought Paige Van Tant, who is also you know, classified as a straw weight. And then she fought Verna, and I believe she lost to Verna. No, yeah, he lost it. Yep, I think so. Yeah, I'm, I'm checking now. Er. While I check, I I agree with you. Chukagan, if she wins, she gets a title shot. Yeah. If she loses, I think Rebus gets the title shot. So I, I think this is kind of a number one contender just because Chukagan right. is like ranked two or three. Um, okay, so she beat Verna, Rebos did, yeah, yeah, but that was again at straw weight, so she's going back up, she's yeah, gonna have a reach disadvantage, she's two inches shorter, She'll so too, so she's great on the ground, though, For and sure. Chukagan is you know great on the feet, right, right. This is a classic question of where's it going to go? If it's a stand up, Chukagan. If it's ground, Rebus. But I'm, I'm going with Rebus. I think she's going to Okay. Think she's going to impress. Yeah, switching okay. it up. I think she I think she does just enough, like just enough to get the nod by the judges. All right. I'm, just a little bit. I like it. That's that's what's up. Cool, cool. Yeah, yeah, it will be interesting to see how it plays out. Uh, I, I, man, that's just what that's what makes MMA so exciting. You know, it's a mix of your martial arts, and can you keep the fight where you want to feed, keep it, and and get the win? And and a lot of fights play out that way. So this should this should be a good one to to see who can who can keep the fight where they want it. Yeah, and Chukagan, she absorbs more strikes. Does 4.3 strikes per minute that she absorbs, and she lands 4.59. So she's got a pretty good 
a pretty good differential right there. Plus two, plus point two, which not bad, but Rebus just getting it. Yeah. Uh oh. Uh -oh. Cool, cool, cool. All right. Next up, we have Davy Grant, who's 13 and 6, versus Louis Smoka, who's 17 and 8. What are your thoughts on this one? Well, both fighters, again, are coming off a loss. Uh, Grant, he's a kickboxer. He losses in he's a row. A, yeah, he's a little bit older, um, but I, I just think even though Smoke is the younger fighter, he has a tendency of, you know, putting on a show for the fans, which is great. But it seems like every time he does, he gets caught and he gets clipped and he gets finished. I think it's in the apex. So maybe he'll take a step back. Maybe he won't put on a show for the fans because there's not going to be that many in there. And I had Grant winning. But now that you start thinking about, you know, not as many fans, I think Smolka is going to – I think he might take a step back, stick to his game plan, and get it done. Nice, nice, man. I I, I think this is going to be a good matchup. Um, I think I think both fighters need to – win. Um, uh, Man, I, I think David Grant is is better all around. I think um, he's he's a good defensive grappler. He's a power puncher, as to where I think Luis Smoka is more of an offensive grappler. Um, to me, uh, I'm, I'm worried about Luis Smoka's chin. He's been dropped in the past uh, more than once. Um, I think he's losing his durability. Uh, he cuts a lot of weight. He's also been KO'd a couple times too. Um, I, I just, I'm really worried about his chin in this one. David Grant, he is on a two fight losing streak, but those two losses were to Marlon Vera and Adrian Yanez. Uh, Marlon Vera, man, the dude's going to the top. We just saw him piece up Rob Font and Adrian Yanez. He's more of an up-and-comer, but Yanez is knocking out a lot of the guys he's fighting. He's finishing a lot of them, and he couldn't finish Davy Grant. Um, uh, I think Davy Grant is good in the scrambles. Um, I, I think this is going to be a scrap, man. I think I, I just think Davy Grant is going to be too powerful, and um, Davy Grant's got a, a good – he's going to do a body-head combo – He's going to go to the body. He's going to get Smoker to lower his hands, and he's going to knock him out, man. I, I, I'm really worried about Smoker's chin in this one. Um, I think Louis Smoker, he could jab out this fight and win like Rose should have done, but she was too scared. Uh, she was mentally defeated before she even entered the fight. Uh, anyway, I, I just think that that uh, uh, he, he probably is going to gas out. He's going to get too tired. A body shot's going to tear him up, and then he's going to get knocked out. Um, I, I think Louis Smoke is going to get finished, man. I hate to say it. I think he is. I can't hear you. Fucking dog. Before I had a moment and I changed my mind, I have on my sheet. I think Smoke is gonna come put on a show, get caught with the right hand, get TKO'd. Yeah. So, yeah, I just I just think it's gonna happen. I... It'll be sad. <laughs> but <laughs> for him, I mean I me, mean, he does have he was promising. He does. There too, you know, and anything can happen. And and, yeah. and if he has like you said, uh you you know, I, I like where the thought is at. I didn't think about that. Like at the apex. Um, he could come in there with a smarter game plan and not look to go crazy and put on a show for the fans and, and you know, use his jab and fight a smart game and win. Um, I, I just think he's going to get caught with something. Yeah. Speaking of get caught, this next fight. Man. Oof, not going man. 15. 
No, no. Ryan Spann, who's 19 and 7, versus Ian Kutalaba, 16, 6 and 1, with one no contest. We got Superman taking on the Hulk. Man. Oh. Oh, wait, it's my goal. Good old DC versus Marvel. Yes, yes. We got some, some classic competition going on here. Man, I think Eon, he's got some power punches. He's a good boxer. A dude tends to get tired. He fades in later rounds. Man, Ryan Spann kind of fades too. He gets tired as well. Uh, he is a good wrestler. I think he's going to be bigger. He's going to be longer. He's going to have a reach advantage on Eon. Uh, um, I just think Eon's a, a better wrestler than Ryan, even though they're both good wrestlers. Uh, Eon, Eon can KO him, and I think he can grind out the fight with his wrestling. Uh, I think both these guys are really similar in how they fight. They utilize their wrestling, try to get a takedown, ground and pound. Uh, they also have a knockout in their back po pack pocket as well. Ryan Spann has good power, man. Um, I just think he tends to underperform, uh, especially against higher competition like he did against Anthony Smith. Um, Ryan Spann is probably going to be too worried about Eon's uh, wrestling. I think Eon's probably going to get some early takedowns, but, but Ryan will be able to get back up. And then all he's going to be thinking about is the wrestling and Eon's probably going to, like, do some fakes and then come with a knockout punch. Um, I, I don't know. I just see something like that that happening. You know, um, these two could just, like, stand, stand and bang. Uh, and, and Ryan could definitely get a win that way, man. Um, uh, if if they, they, they stand and trade, um, I, Ryan is, is known as a power puncher, but he's not has the superpower in my mind um I, I just see this playing out in, in eon's favor um what about you so i like span talented fighter for sure he he does have a four inch reach advantage yeah but 75 percent of kutalaba's fights he has put him to sleep and he's got bricks for hands. He hits hard, and you can tell when he hits. Like, you can tell his opponent is like, oh, he hits hard. So right. I think he's with the reach disadvantage. I think the first couple of minutes, he's going to try to mix in some of his takedowns. Yeah, yeah. Kind of like back with uh, Aljamain, you know. He didn't use him to get him down. He used him to add the extra thought. Oh, he can. He's gonna right. try to take me down. Yeah, exactly. And I think. I think Kuchalaba is gonna use that page. Just a couple with you know we've seen with the Anthony Smith fight for Ryan Span, he gets frustrated, and then his game plan goes out the window. I think Kuchalaba is gonna use that for the first two minutes, and then it's just gonna be stand and bang. And Kutalaba is going to get the victory. Hey, oh. Yeah, yeah. I definitely think so, too. Um, it should be a good, good, decent, pretty decent co-main event. Um, uh, I do see Eon getting this one. I, I think he'll get a finish as well. So so I'm look, looking forward to that fight. Uh, should be a good scrap. Right. Next up, we have the co-main event. Jan Blahovich. Who's twenty eight and nine, former champion versus What's Alexander Rockich, fourteen and two. What are your thoughts? Well, my thoughts are Polish power. I don't see it's, it's not going to the judges. It's Rockich is a talented fighter, you know, number three for a reason. Obviously, number one contender fight. I just don't think. He is going to have the answer for Blakovich. I think Blakovich is gonna gonna not wrestle, even though we have seen against a smaller fighter that he can. But he's gonna just throw caution to the wind. 
go in there and strike. He got caught, you know, sleeping against Glover. Glover and I don't think he's going to I don't think he's going to engage in the wrestling again. He's going to strike and he's going to put Rockets to sleep. Oh, oh, you like Jan in this one, huh? Okay. I do. Nice, man. Yeah, like you said, Jan, man. He's got that Polish power, man. Dude is he's super powerful. Plus, he's super technical as well. He's just an all-around great striker. Plus, the guy has good takedown defense, even though Glover got him down to sub to him. He, he does have pretty good takedown defense. Um, I think Alexander is a really good prospect, man. The dude is super athletic. He's a great wrestler. He's got great cardio. Um, I, I just think Jan is, is not so good on the mat. Um, he can get held down. He has a hard time getting up. I think the key to this fight is if it, Alexander Rakish can get the takedown or not. Um, I, I think that's that's um, going to make the difference in how this fight plays out. It's a five-round fight, so he's got plenty of time to work and get that takedown and look for, for a finish there. Um, uh, the other question is if Jan can hurt uh, Alex early. If Jan can land one of those power punches early uh, and affect Alexander, he definitely can win the fight. Uh, the longer the fight goes, I think the more likely Alexander is to win. Um, I think Alexander needs to, to really set up his takedowns and not just shoot in like he has done before. Um, if he just shoots in, Jan's going to be able to stuff those takedowns. Um, I think Alexander needs to use his leg kicks and um, affect the mobility of Jan. Um, like, like we saw against Anthony Smith. Uh, I think he did it against something else. But, like, dude, you could tell um, after he kicked Anthony Smith in the leg a couple of times, man, dude, uh, Anthony Smith didn't know what to do, man. He couldn't move after that. I'm pretty sure he limped out of the cage, and everything. So I, I, so I think he needs to uh, use those those leg kicks, affect Jan's mobility, uh, uh, hurt him with hurt his leg. It's really gonna throw Jan off his game. Uh, look for the takedown, and, and look to ground him out or or get a sub finish there. Um, uh, another another issue in this fight, Jan is injured. He was injured. This fight was supposed to take place before, but they pushed it back a little bit. Um, so I think that injury that Jan had could play into this. Um, and and I think the 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 most recent that that defeat of him losing the title to Glover kind of gave a, a a key strategy on on how to beat Jan. And uh, if Alexander can affect his mobility, affect his movement, and get a takedown, he should be able to win this fight as long as he doesn't get hurt early on. Um, so that for that reason, I'm going to pick Alexander Rakish. Oh. Yeah, yeah. I, I just... I, Bold move, Charles. We'll see how it pays off. I know, right? Right? Yeah. I, I, I think he can do it, though. I really do. Um Man, that I am worried about that power, uh, dude. It, dude hits like a truck. Uh, I would not. Two and a half rounds. Man, under. No, I'm saying he has two and a half rounds. Oh. If he can make it past there, the power doesn't seem to be as effective. Right, right. That's so. That's what I was thinking. Like the longer this fight goes, the the worse it's gonna be for Jan for sure. And, yeah. And that's 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 why Alexander can take over. So that's 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 why I'm gonna go with that. We've all man, there's also uh we got another exciting, really exciting fight. Uh didn't didn't really spend too much time on it, but uh the Bellator fights this Friday night. Um man, Michael Venom Page and Logan Storley are fighting for uh, a tie it's an interim title, I believe, because the other title holder can't find out. I'm kind of excited about this fight, man. Venom Page is on a tear, man. Th this is definitely a striker versus grappler match. Logan Storley is a, 
a crazy, crazy good wrestler. He uh, he beat my boy from Wisconsin, who tra trains out of Chosen Few, Dante Shiro. He just absolutely put him to him. Uh, Logan Story also just beat Nehemiah and Gracie. Uh, I mean, he out wrestled a Gracie. So, I mean, that, that should tell you how great this guy's wrestling is. Michael Venom Page, though, man, that dude is crazy. He could lay the smack down on Logan if he's not careful. Uh, uh, man, it, it's, it's hard to even pick a winner in this one. But uh, I just think it's another great fight to watch out for uh, and something that should be said, even though it's not a UFC fight. Uh, if you have showtime, check out that Bellator fight this week, this Friday as well. Man, what do you Here's think? Here's a fun fact. Logan Storley beat Joaquin Buckley. You know? Uh, yeah. Or a Karana kick kid. Yeah. Yes. Yes. The highlight. I'm going to have to go with the scroll crushing Michael Venom page. Yeah. Yeah. I think if if MVP lands on him, he's, he, he can put Storley to sleep. Uh, I, I, I think I think Logan Storley is just going to run across the cage and try to get a hold of them quickly. Um, uh, you know, the, the, some of those wins over Nehemiah and Gracie and Don, Dante Shirlo, they're not the highest level competition. Um, maybe they just didn't know how to react to that wrestling as well as Venom Page will. And uh, Venom Page is probably going to be able to land on them. Um, but it should be a good fight, man. Uh, I'll definitely be watching it this Friday night for sure. I think, I think the key to this fight is did MVP get into his head? And he's like, you know, MVP's got chops like Conor McGregor. Yeah. Mental warfare. He talks that story. Yeah, Storley is gonna. Is he gonna come in and stick to his game plan and you know wrestle? Or is he going to come in and try to knock his head off because he's mad about everything that MVP said? I doubt it. And MVP, his wrestling is not as bad as people say. Like, obviously, he's fought wrestlers before. You know, he's beat them. Um, he got clipped by Lima and yep. only lost. Yeah, but he was winning that fight before he, you know, but showboating, is that gonna is that gonna affect him again? Right, so, right, right. Still going to MVP. He's gonna fight the Ukrainian soldier when you know when the war is over and everything. But it's gonna be a good one. He's gonna get the interim title and get the real title or fight for the real yeah. title when the time comes. Cool, yeah. cool, yeah, yeah. Hey, we would love to hear your thoughts on any of the fights. Let us know in the comments who you think is going to win. Uh, man, hey, reach out to us if you're interested in being a co-host on the show, uh, a guest host. Uh, let us know if you have a fighter or you know a fighter that's interested uh, in uh, being in our Fighter Spotlight show. Uh, we look forward to the next show. Uh, we look forward to what the future brings, and, and we're going up, man. We're, we're real excited about the future of this show and, and the potential it has. Closing thoughts on you? I enjoy doing this. It's, yes. it's fun to sit back and, you know, read about the fighters and see what they've done. Little facts like the Joaquin Buckley. And... Right, right. Definitely take a digger deep into all, all of it, all the fighting. and yeah. Because if they're not the main card, they don't really get talked about on all these other shows. Right, right. To me, it just... It, uh, uh, doing that little bit of research and reading more about it, it just uh, it brings a little bit more excitement into the fights. And then, and then, kind of like when you're guessing on them, and, and especially if when you bet on them, you're like, you want to know if if uh, your analysis was correct, uh, and and to, to see if you were right. So it just it just brings an extra level of excitement all around. Um, yeah, yeah, awesome. This has been the second episode of Two Dudes in a Cage. We thank you for your time. Keep tuning in. Keep keep watching. We see you out there. We're getting li lots of views, uh, lots of hours of watch time. Uh, so they're coming in, and uh, we're going to get better and better, and we look forward to the next one. We'll see you next week.